All right, guys, today we're gonna be building all of these banner hangers. They're a little bit over three foot by six. Tommy and I are gonna do a one day build. Let's get it done. So to make these hangers, we're gonna jump right into it. I had Tommy cutting out the pieces that we needed from three quarter inch square tube over at the miter saw station while I was at the plasma table cutting out these triangular gusset pieces. Really, I'm just using the plasma table because we have it. This is something that would be dead easy to cut out with a metal cutting circle saw or even a grinder. And as you can see, the water's a little low, so those pieces were kind of hot. Um, cutting those out of 10 gauge just because I had some left behind. That's probably overkill for an eight inch gusset. Get all those pieces cut. As you see, Tommy was using a uh, clamp to mark off the ends of the cuts just to make it easy. That's fine to do on long pieces, but don't do it on short pieces because you can get the piece of metal to bind between that end stop and the saw blade and kind of fling it across the shop very quickly. I've talked about them before. Uh, there's no sponsorship involved here. These magnetic chucks, there is a link in the description that supports the channel. They're a great time saver. The old way to do it, you clamp the part, move the clamp, you get to rushing, and... Friggin' hit myself with a flap disc, god oh. dang it! Oh. Ow. Now there was no prop or staging in that. That sucked, my finger's still a little beat up from it. So we jump over to the magnetic chuck where you just put the piece on and if you hang it off the edge like that, the magnet's strong enough to hold it but not so strong you can't just manually pick the piece off which speeds everything up. Now we're gonna jump over and grab some of these uh, squares from Fireball Tools, clamp everything up for making the first one of these frames. Uh, these clamps are great, you just clamp them in, they hold everything square and it stays square. I think it's just the mass of them and how well they're made. Flip the piece around, weld on the other side, and we have a perfectly good rectangle, which is square and nice, but we will check it with a tape measure, corner to corner, make sure it's right, and it was within a sixteenth of an inch. Boom! Now that we know that that first one is perfect, I'm gonna grab these little cut-off triangle pieces from whenever I make miters. I've got a card here to a video where I go over why I do it that way. And we're just gonna tack those down to the table, making a little jig. It's pretty much just three at each edge to hold the corners in place. A little quick tack, the jig will break off easier later. And now we can just take all those pieces that Tommy cut, drop them into the jig, and just weld that top surface um, more than a tack, but not necessarily a full weld. And that'll hold together, let it sit in the clamps for 30 seconds to cool down, pop it out, and rinse, lather, repeat. It took probably 10 minutes to get that first one all nice and square. And then after that, the other nine probably also took 10 minutes. It was real quick once that jig's set up. It's definitely worth the time to make it anytime you're making more than, I don't know, three or four of the same thing. Again, the card will show you a project where we had to make 20 shapes that were fairly complicated. We'll just break the jig off the table and Tommy's gonna jump over here, grab the pieces that would be the legs of these stands, and punch a hole in each end for a stake. He's later gonna widen these up to uh, 3 8 inch holes off camera, while I weld out the rest of those joints. And now with the table cleared off, this goes really quick. Uh, probably 20 minutes to do the whole batch of them. Just rinse, lather, repeat, kind of batching them out. You know, 10 of something is kind of a middle number. You make them one or two, you don't really get into a rhythm. You make 50 of something, you really get into a rhythm. At 10, you're just starting to figure it out by the time you finish. And here you see me filling a gap. It's just tack, tack, tack on either side of the joint to close up a gap. This three quarter inch square tube is 16 gauge wall, so you do have to be a little cautious with it. And then grinding, just clean those joints up. Again, these are banner hangers. They don't need to be really, um, you know, clean, precise. These are gonna use like once a year. So we just clean them up. We don't get super complicated. And Tommy figures out a faster way to do it than I'm doing. So 
The tops of the pieces get a hole in them where you'll run a zip tie through to attach the banner to the frame at the bottom. The zip tie will kind of wrap around the leg. Now we move on to putting the legs on. The first one we tried clamping up with a Fireball Squares jig and it worked, but it because of the way uh, nothing's in plane there, it didn't really make it that much faster. So after welding out that first one, Tommy and I figured out that if we just hold the frame vertical and then add a tack once the leg is uh, positioned on center, we can then grab two squares and square up in both directions, then add another tack and that piece is locked together. So we just go through and weld everything out at this point. Those gussets get tacked into place and then weld it out. It's really just uh, five stitch welds to keep everything in place. Inch long stitch weld is going to hold. The customer was, um, let's say price motivated. So we're giving them a product that we can make affordably for them and we'll stand up to what they need. So with that done, we got them ready to be shipped out. The customer wanted to uh, finish and paint these themselves to save a little bit, and I am always happy to accommodate. All right guys, if you enjoyed that video, you can subscribe, check out the full breakdown on how, how I bid that project on Patreon, or two other videos YouTube think you might like. Thanks. Damn it. <laughs> I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Goodbye.